ever lose focus when you are listening? If so, I'm gonna give you a little bit of help with that today. Do you ever lose focus when you are listening? If so, I'm gonna give you a little bit of help with that today. Now, with our VIP students, what we do is we help them figure out exactly why they got questions wrong on a practice listening test so that we can determine their weakness and help them improve that weakness and then they can increase their score. Now, one thing that our students often tell us is that they just lose focus in the listening. Now, you do not want to lose focus because you only get to hear the recording one time in an IELTS test. So if you lose focus and you miss an answer, you do not get a second chance. So you really don't want to lose focus. So why do students lose focus? Why might you lose focus if you're doing a listening practice test? Well, one reason is vocabulary. If there's a lot of words that you don't know, how are you supposed to follow what the speaker is saying? I know this is true because I used to live in Japan and I studied Japanese and my Japanese was okay when I would go out with my friends and they would talk to me directly. They would use words that they knew I could understand and that was fine. We could have a conversation. But when they started talking to each other, they just used their normal vocabulary and then there was a lot of words that I did not know. So I would try to follow their conversation, but how long do you think I could focus on their conversation? Not long, not long, because there was just too many words I didn't know. I could try to guess and I could try to, you know, figure out more or less kind of what they were saying but it was really hard and it was really tiring. So I totally understand how students could lose focus in a listening test if there's just too many words that they don't know. So how do you improve this weakness? Well, you improve your vocabulary. If you increase your vocabulary and improve your vocabulary, you will increase your score in every single part of the IELTS test. How do you do that? Well, Chris has a really good vocabulary mini course that you could use. And I would also suggest listening to English every day. So the more you listen in English, the more you're going to be exposed to different topics, different vocabulary, and your vocabulary will improve, right? After a year of hanging out with my Japanese friends, my Japanese vocabulary improved. It, it, it does, it will get easier, but vocabulary really is, is key. Now, the second reason is also related to vocabulary, but slightly different. So a lot of our students say that when they look at the transcript, it's, it's obvious then what the answer is. They can easily understand it from the transcript. So they know a lot of the words but they couldn't catch the words when they were listening. So some have heard uh, students say that native speakers speak too quickly and that we sort of eat the words. So it's not clear. So we're not clearly pronouncing the words. And in order to understand native speakers, you have to know the rules of English pronunciation. It's really going to help. Um, we don't, we kind of eat the words, I guess, because some sounds disappear some sounds change, some new sounds appear, but there are rules for all of these things. Now I've got a cup of tea here with me today. It's a bit chilly in here. Could you catch what I said? The first thing I said was, I've got a cup of tea today. Now, I think everybody could probably understand that, even though I didn't say cup of tea, I said cup of tea, because you've heard that a lot. So you know that cup of tea sounds like a cup of tea. So when you hear the sounds, cup of tea, you know that it means cup of tea. But what about what I said after that? It's chilly in here. Can you understand those words? Now you might've heard chill and you might know the word chilly. And then you might've heard in ear and you might think in ear, 
no, that can't be right because that doesn't make sense. So you're going to use your knowledge of English, English grammar, you're going to use your knowledge of the context, like what did I probably say? And hopefully you're also going to use your knowledge of English pronunciation rules to know why in here is in here. So what we're going to do now is a little bit of practice. Uh, with a couple sentences, I'm going to show you some of the rules of English pronunciation and how it can help you catch the words that the speaker is saying. And then I'm going to give you one that you can practice with. So let's take a look. Let's practice. Here is a sentence. It has eight words. I'm going to read the sentence three times. I want you to see if you can catch what I'm saying and write down the sentence. Before we begin, I'm also going to give you some context because when you're listening, you should always use your knowledge of the context to help you. So you will quickly read through the, the dialogue that you get and you'll have some idea of who are these people, you know, where are they? So I'm going to tell you that for this sentence as well. So there's a woman. She has a friend. Her friend's name is Peter. P-E-T-E-R. Peter. Peter works in a shop fixing bicycles. Now, I'm going to read the sentence three times. You can pause the video if you need to. You can rewind it as well. Uh, but here we go. She offered to help Peter paint 10 bikes. She offered to help Peter paint 10 bikes. She offered to help Peter paint 10 bikes. Now, you can pause the video if you need. I want you to look very carefully at your sentence and I want you to use your knowledge of English grammar to fix any possible mistakes you might have made. Now, let's look at the answer. So here's the sentence. She offered to help Peter paint 10 bikes. Now, if native speakers spoke like this, Listening would be a lot easier, but we don't. So learning the rules of English pronunciation and connected speech can really help you. I'm going to explain a few of those rules here. So take a look at your, uh, your sentence. Did you get this ED ending here? Now, your ears will not have caught it because I did not say it. I did not say she offered it to help. I said she offered to help. She offered to help. So if you just wrote down O-F-F-E-R offer, you've made a mistake. You didn't catch that it was in the past. Now, here's why I said she offered to help instead of she offered to help. The rule is when we have a D sound before a T sound, the D sound disappears. So when this word is said by itself on its own, it sounds like offered. When this word to is said on its own, it sounds like to. But when these two words are next to each other in a sentence, it sounds like offered to, offered to. Now, you know that if you have a sentence in the simple present and the subject is she, the verb will take an S. You definitely did not hear offers. She offers to help. So if you just wrote down she offered to, you should have been able to identify the grammar mistake there and then fix it using your knowledge of English grammar. You cannot just rely on your ears when you are listening because native speakers do not make all of the sounds. There's rules for it and learning those rules can definitely help. Let's look at these two words here. Did you get that this word was help? Now, if I had said help Peter, I think everybody would have got those words, but I didn't say help Peter. I said help Peter, help Peter. You did not hear this p sound twice because I did not make it twice. So the rule is when one word ends in a certain sound and the next word begins in that same sound, we only make that sound one time. So help Peter, not help Peter, help Peter. So if you don't know that, you might not have caught that this word is help. You probably got Peter because I told you the, the man's name before we started, but help, this is the word here. 
Now, did you get this word here? Again, if I had said paint 10 bikes, I think everybody would have got these three words. But what happens to these sounds here? Well, we've just learned the rule that when one word ends in a certain sound and the next word begins in that same sound, we don't make the sound twice. So I did not say paint 10, paint 10. I said paint 10. So you might have heard pain, pain. And there is a word pain, like <laughs> something, something hurts, right? I have a pain in my leg, my leg hurts. Now you would know that that word makes absolutely no sense in this context. So you need to know this rule of English pronunciation. You think, okay, even though I heard the word pain, I know it, I know this rule. So it's paint, paint, 10, paint, right? Now this word here is 10 and bikes. Did you get the word 10? I didn't say 10 bikes. I said tem, tem, mm, 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 with a mm sound. So when this word is on its own, it's 10. When this word is on its own, it's bikes. Now bikes stays the same, but this b sound affects the sound that comes before it. So when we have a n sound and the next word begins with the b sound, this b sound, it affects this sound here. Now, if I try to say 10 bikes and I try to say that really quickly, it's hard, it's not easy. Now, all rules of English pronunciation are designed to make things more efficient and make our mouth and lips and tongue do less work. So when I make the b sound, well, I want you to make the b sound and I want you to notice where your lips go to make the b sound, b, 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 they go together, yeah? Now I want you to make the m sound and notice where your lips go. Mm. Well, they go together, don't they? So the reason why the n sound becomes a m sound is so that our lips are ready to make the next sound. So 10 bikes becomes 10, 10 bikes, 10 bikes. She offered to help Peter paint 10 bikes. Now that you know the rules and why you heard the sounds that you heard, what you can do is a practice called micro listening. Micro listening is when you connect the words to the sounds of the words by listening to a chunk or a short segment many times. So you would rewind and listen again, rewind and listen again, rewind and listen again. And it helps your mind connect the words to the sounds that you hear. And I would encourage everybody to do this kind of practice so that you get better at catching what the speaker is saying. If you just think you're gonna do like a hundred practice listening tests, that will not make you <laughs> catch everything that the speaker is saying. It's not gonna help you with that. You have to learn the rules of English pronunciation and then you have to connect the sounds to the actual words. Time for your task. All right, here's your task now. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of help. I'm gonna give you the context. So I have a friend, his name is Tim. I have another friend, his name is Don. Okay, we went to a party and I introduced Tim and Dom to each other. Okay, so that's the context. Now, here is the sentence. It is six words. I'd like you to write them down and then I'd like you to post your answer down below. I'm gonna read, read, okay. I'm gonna say the sentence three times. Here it is. He talked to him all evening. He talked to him all evening. He talked to him all evening. I didn't say it slower because you need to get used to, to listening at normal speed. Um, six words, do your best. Post your answer down below. Check your spelling uh, because if you spell a word wrong in the listening test, it is wrong. If you've got it right and if you spelt all the words right and if everybody has done this then everybody's answers will match exactly. So if you found this useful and you would like more help increasing your IELTS scores then please subscribe to our channel. Good luck with the task everybody. Bye-bye.